Hello, Westminster friends and neighbors. I'm Dr. Scott Willens, candidate for Westminster City Council. I appreciate this opportunity to speak with you about our shared priorities for the future of Westminster. I joined the Army after 9-11, and in 2022, I retired as a lieutenant colonel with 20 years of active duty service and an Iraq War deployment. I am also a veterinarian and animal hospital owner, board certified in preventive medicine, and I hold a PhD in pharmacology. I chose Westminster as my home in my Army retirement, along with my wife, Deborah, son, Matthew, two precious rescue beagles, Daisy and Leonidas, and an affectionate off-the-track thoroughbred named Winner. I am privileged to serve on the Carroll County Veterans Independence Project Board of Directors and lifetime membership in Westminster VFW Post 467. The city of Westminster has so much to offer from rich history and heritage to exceptional schools and business opportunities. How do we bridge what's best of our past and present diverse cultures and ideas, and lifelong residents and newcomers. One Westminster, safety, prosperity, accountability. Safety means feeling secure in your home, at work, in your vehicle, and walking down the street, regardless of neighborhood, financial status, or identity. As a parent concerned about the safety of our children and community, I will support and enable all levels of law enforcement for all they risk and sacrifice on our behalf in their ongoing collaborative mission against crime and drugs. I'm grateful for the late shift ride-alongs with a state trooper, Carroll County Sheriff's Deputy and Westminster Police. They've collectively indicated that more training opportunities are always appreciated, particularly legal training that would aid in protecting our rights as citizens, as well as themselves and each other against the thankfully waning defund the police movement. Their body cameras are welcome additions to enhance subjectivity. I believe in stopping smaller gateway crimes in their tracks, thereby curbing more egregious felonies. There are no petty crimes concerning injury to life, limb, or livelihood. More substantial crimes are fewer in number, thanks to our finest and bravest, but those are not usually committed by citizens of our city or even our county, and the slumlords must be reined in. Prosperity in the wake of COVID, burdensome inflation, and hiring and supply chain issues should be center stage for elected leadership. It's not the purview of government at any level to create jobs, but to foster a climate favorable to business success. Oppressive regulations and taxes drive away precious human resources and further diminish our tax base. As a business owner, I will make your business my business with the same determination that I advocate for my own animal hospital. As a trained and experienced environmental scientist and preventive medicine specialist, I will ensure that big and small businesses alike are not stifled by scientifically baseless restrictions railroaded under the guise of environmentalism and public health crises, respectively. Voters know best how to recycle their plastic shopping bags for use in their bathroom garbage cans or for picking up after their pets instead of having to buy them anyway. Fiscal accountability, stewardship, and transparency should be expected of all public servants. I managed annual military budgets from tens to hundreds of millions of dollars, as well as my animal hospital. I wrote, reviewed, and managed grants, and I appreciate the addition of a grant writer to the city staff. I would expand on that staffing to obtain more state, federal, and private funds for city projects without having to raise taxes. Accountability should include comprehensive review of a 27-year-old city zoning that no longer reflects the population size and demographic, infrastructure, and businesses. In my opinion, $3 million spent on the municipal pool that is only used by a few hundred of us is not an appropriate allocation. If I were to join a gym or other athletic club where dues are paid, I would not expect the city to pay for my facilities. If our tax dollars are to be used for the municipal pool, then we should at least be granted a day pass for the tithe on our toil. New leadership with fresh ideas results from term limits, a national pledge I signed last year that still holds today. This is an issue that should and does transcend party lines, and 23 years is well past the gray zone of term limits. The seat belongs to the people, not an individual, and it's time to give it back. Running on a slate, or the, an appearance of a slate, undermines the decisions and underestimates the intellect of voters by bundling candidates over distinguishing each for their strengths and weaknesses. The current informal slate also condones indefinite tenure over term limits by association. Contested elections are always more vibrant and enlightening, and Westminster citizens have a fourth and clear option for City Council on May 9th. I respectfully ask for your vote so that I may serve the city of Westminster as I have served America. Thank you.